I asked you the best way to supplement your science lesson? I am guessing most of you would say add experiments or study nature and draw what you see. While these are awesome ways to supplement your science day, I encourage you to add games as well. Professor Naga's Trivia Games has been one of Rainbow's most popular card games for several years, and for good reason. Offering several topics from science and history, this card game provides two levels of play and flexibility. Each player decides whether to play the student or scholar level, depending on age or subject understanding. To begin playing, simply place all the cards in a pile with the pitcher side up. The first player draws the top card, holding it up so everyone can see the pitcher. The player to the left rolls the included die, which determines which question is read. Player one reads the question and player two answers it. Get the answer correct, keep the card, and the play passes. Play continues until all the cards have been played. It is designed for ages seven and up, two or more players. Nerdword Science is a newer party game for two to 12 players, ages 13 and up. This game is best played in teams as you will find it easier to brainstorm together to reach the correct response. Once you divide players into teams, the clue giver picks a science term from their card and writes down a clue starting with a letter in the term. Let's look at an example from this card. Volcano is the first term and is defined as the opening of the Earth's crust where molten rock erupts to the surface. While players do not need to define the term, it can be helpful for the clues. Using the word volcano, you could write clues like opening, crust, ash, or lava. The first letter of the word must be the fourth clue, so you would need to be thinking ahead. You are not allowed to give forms of the words as clue. For example, volcanic. As clues are written down, the guesser will gradually see the letters used to spell the word. Teams have one minute to guess the term before they get another clue, and the points drop. The clue giver and teams can bet on guesses to gain more points. But be careful. For incorrect guesses, the points are deducted. The team with the most points at the end wins and proves their superior scientific knowledge. The game includes words from all branches of science, which allows the opportunity to use it year after year. It's a great way to improve science vocabulary at the upper levels. This fast-paced game beats vocab flashcards any day. Blinded by Science is a simple, easy-to-play trivia game for teens and adults who know their science. Each trivia card has three questions of increasing difficulty from either biology, chemistry, or physics. Occasionally, an extra credit question is included. Simply read the questions in order, allowing the other player to answer. For each correct answer, the guessing player scores one point. It's really that simple. Gameplay can last anywhere from 15 to 60 minutes depending on the number of players or which game path you select. Instructions are provided for short, regular, and long games. Pandemic is a cooperative board game that will change the way you look at the world around you. In this game, two to four players join forces working together as members of a highly skilled task force. Your mission is to save the world from the outbreak of four deadly diseases. Sounds easy, right? Each player has a different role. You may be a scientist, quarantine specialist, medic, or researcher. Each player takes a turn and may perform one of four actions, move to a new city, treat a disease, share knowledge, or discover the cure. But with outbreaks looming and epidemics increasing the rate of infection at unknown intervals, you must function as a team and plan carefully to discover the cures and save the world. In pandemic, you win or lose together as a team. Built-in features such as random shuffling, five different roll cards, and a flexible number of epidemic cards provide a different game every time and allow for easy to hard level of play. Expansion packs are also available with new challenges and roles to keep your game ever evolving, much like a real virus. A very cleverly designed game that will take all your wits and seamless teamwork, and it could still beat you. It works best for children ages 10 and up, although younger ones will enjoy being a part of the team. It is for two to four players, and gameplay will take approximately one hour. Next are the Flux card games. If your family loves game playing, but also finds they get bored easily, and frequently you change the rules to create a new way to play, be sure to check out the Flux line of card games. By design, Flux provides countless options of gameplay, all in one game. 
And for those of us who like consistent rules in gameplay, this game may feel a bit chaotic. Flux games are available in different STEM topics, including nature, astronomy, anatomy, chemistry, and math. Starting the game is easy. Shuffle all the cards and deal each player three cards. The game begins with only a couple basic rules, but new rules can be played and goals changed. There are four types of cards in Flux, the keepers, the goals, the actions, and the new rules. Keepers are the core of the game and are used to fulfill the current goal, such as playing a certain combination of keepers. Actions often affect one player, but can force everyone to draw or play cards and even change the rules. The goal and action cards provide a sneaky way to reteach science concepts. For example, in the Astronomy Flux game, one of the goals is to accumulate three of the inner planets, which are listed on the card, Mercury, Venus, Earth, or Mars. One of the action cards, Supernova, instructs players to discard all keepers in play except for the galaxy, nebula, and the void. Finally, new rules add a whole new level of chaos by mandating how the game is played. During each turn, players draw and play as many cards as dictated by the current rules, striving to complete the current goal. But as you may have guessed, this is easier said than done. Rules and goals are constantly in flux, requiring luck and timing to achieve victory. Flux is best for ages eight and up, two to six players. The gameplay takes about 10 to up to 45 minutes, depending on how the rules change during gameplay. Most of the games we have talked about are designed for older children, but what if you have younger ones? Taking a beloved game of the preschool crowd and making it a learning experience, Junior Rangerland's Night Sky Finder is a cosmic go fish card game that is suitable for ages four and up. The object is to collect four cards of the same number and picture called book. Gameplay is like Go Fish, shuffle and deal six cards face down. These cards are kept hidden from the rest of the players. The youngest player goes first and asks one player for a specific card. The player being asked must give all the requested cards to the person asking. If he has none, the other player is told to go fish. The player who made the request draws one card from the center and then play passes to the left. The game continues until all 12 books are played. The player with the most books is declared the winner. Game cards include the Aurora Borealis, the Solar System, Moon, and numerous constellations. Each card includes a colorful illustration and related fact. For example, one of the Solar System cards states, Our solar system is made up of eight planets. Their moons, the sun, dwarf planets, the meteorites, and everything else that travels around the sun. Night Sky is a great way to casually teach important facts about the sky that will help students master content found in curriculum in the elementary and middle school years. Thank you for joining me today. If we can help you pick the best science-focused game to meet the needs of your family, please contact us at 888-841-3456 or click the live chat feature on our website. You can also send us an email at consultants at rainbowresource.com. Thank you.